Stitchy Tube. Settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. I haven't sang that, sung that. I haven't said that song, said it, sang it for a long time. Uh, I had a couple of quickie videos that showed up in the middle of my market preparation season, but really, I don't know. The last time I did a Stitchy Tube was a long time ago. And it's not that I haven't been thinking about you guys, and it's not that I haven't been living, breathing, eating, sleeping needlework, because I have. Like, it is needlework overload, which is great. Market season is wonderful. It's fun to prep for. It's fun to create for. It's fun to go to, and it's fun to kind of relive the memories after it's gone and then look forward to next year. So this was, um, for those of you who don't know, this was Nashville Needlework Market uh, season last weekend the first weekend of March right what right <laughs> was Nashville Needlework Market which is a time when designers distributors creators all come together in Nashville and have a trade show at the Embassy Suites in Franklin Tennessee it happens once a year and it really is it's like 120 or 140 different needlework stores all in one building and shops uh, online and actual like brick and mortar shops all come together to look at the goodies and it's a, a weekend full of just kind of camaraderie and laughing and enjoying each other and so it just really is fun it's over now it's over now but not really because it's um I'm still taking orders I'm I'm taking a lot of orders for the new stuff that's come in I'm still putting new things up because it all hasn't arrived yet I feel like I have a fuzz in my mouth um because I, I didn't get to some booths before they had sold out. And some booths sold out of things within like a half an hour on Friday, which was actually before the show should have even opened. <clears throat> so I thought I would, I've, I've got a lot to tell you today and a lot to show you. I did interviews with some folks and I'm going to put those in the middle of this video. But I thought I'd start with, I'll start with talking about just the schedule of what the Nashville week looked like, which is that on Thursday, <coughs> I loaded up the car and drove up to Nashville. It's typically about a six hour drive for me from Hattiesburg, Mississippi here. It's beautiful. Tennessee is a beautiful state if you haven't ever been there. But for some reason it was kind of a white knuckle driving trip. It wasn't really the weather and it wasn't really that there was so much maybe you know in, in terms of accidents or road work. It just seemed like there were times where it was stop and go on the interstate. So it took an extra hour for me to get there than usual and it was a lot of semis on the road and I so appreciate people who are willing to drive a semi as their profession because we obviously need it to get our things like groceries and, and whatever. But it's hard to drive amongst a lot of different semis. And so I was like, oh, like kind of white knuckle driving. Sue got into the airport at, I don't know, oh, 10 o'clock, maybe Thursday night. And so I drove to get her, uh, ordered a pizza when we got back to the hotel. And I really already had everything in the booth by that point. When you go to Nashville Needlework Market, everybody has to haul a whole bunch of stuff up to their rooms. And so the Embassy Suites Hotel has like these carts that it's it's kind of a flat cart and then it's got things where you can also hang bags from it. And everybody wants to use those kind of at the same time. And unfortunately, some people, some people get a cart when they get there and then hide it in their room so that they can use it when they want to when they leave on Monday, which is not nice. It's not nice because you have 150 other, not only you know designers and everything, but the people who are staying there also need to use the carts too, and there are only so many carts. And so what the Embassy Suites did wisely this year is if you wanted to use a cart, uh, you had to go with a bellhop. A bellhop hop had to accompany you to your vehicle to get everything and then get it up into your room. And it was nice actually, cause he helped me, I had a nice young man help me get all my stuff up. It only took two trips and um, that was really great. So got to, had pizza, went to bed and everything was under control this year for me. Typically, typically a lot of times I will not have everything ready. Uh, I sometimes will bring kits that have to still be put together or I bring charts that still have to be tucked into their sleeves. And this year, everything was ready. And one of the bonuses this year is that I wasn't also working a full-time job like I was last year at the bookstore. So I really was very prepped, which meant that on Friday, I was able to start just visiting with people, kind of take my time setting my booth up. And Friday night, there's a, kind of an, I don't know, call it an open house or kind of an early bird event where some 
of the stores are open for business. And it's nice because I also have to do shopping while I'm there. So I got to chit chat with people and do some of my shopping that I knew I wouldn't have time for on Saturday. Saturday, the show opens at nine, right? And it was great. We go down and have breakfast and then just open up and sold stuff all day. And I don't, I don't really remember if I got out much on Saturday. I think I did a little bit, but mainly on Sunday is when I kind of get out again because uh, it's just a slower day. Some of the shops go home Sunday because they want to reopen on Monday, but then there are some stores that just come on Sunday that that's their first day. And so it's not that it's not busy. It's just that Saturday is typically the busiest day. I have done the Friday open house in the past, but I, the last few times just have decided not to, because like I said, sometimes I'm not always prepped and I do like to shop a little bit ahead of time. And I have just found that, you know, if you open Friday, it just means that your Sunday is really, really slow because pretty much everybody's had a chance to come see you. So, um, I don't open on Friday, but anyway, that's, uh, so Sunday, the show was over at four. We stayed open a little bit late because some shops were like in a panic because the show was over. <laughs> the show was over and they hadn't finished shopping yet. There just are so many places to go. And the, the shot, the show really just runs like it's like eight hours Saturday and nine out, or seven hours on Sunday. And then the early bird stuff. And it's just, that's a lot of places to go in 17 hours if you've you know got the time. So we stayed open slightly later on Sunday, which was fine. And then just kind of packed it all up. There wasn't much left. I did organize the things that I had bought for the shop and we went out to Carabas. Uh, Sue and I went out to Carabas with Jennifer, which is kind of our, we always go to Carabas, which is great. We uh, had pasta and raspberry martinis and just celebrated a good show. And so I think we had a really great time. It's always fun to see my designer friends and distributor friends and shop owner friends. And it's just once a year, like we get to see these people once a year. And so we all, <laughs> My, th my throat was sore and cracky from just talking and my lips were chapped from talking because it's just talk, 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 talk all weekend. Monday, Sue actually got a ride to the airport, which was nice. And then I, you know, was loaded up and got ready to head out of town. I got lost on the way out of town and accidentally got back on the interstate going the wrong direction. And I was like, crap, 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 crap. But I bumped into a an Einstein bagel company and I got pumpernickel and poppy seed bagels, which I love, but we cannot get those locally here. There's no, we have some bagels, we have Panera, but they don't make those kinds and those are my favorites. So got home in good time. It was just a six hour trip back and came home unloaded and didn't really sleep well because it's just a lot to come down off of, but that's the schedule. Um, <clears throat> I thought I'd list my, my 10 favorite things from Nashville and it's really hard to pick it's really hard to pick. And I, like I said, I don't even have it all in yet. So I just, these aren't necessarily my top 10. These are just 10 things that came first to mind when I was thinking of what my favorite things were of the, of the weekend. And some of them, I'm going to put pictures here because you'll get a better picture here of some, I, I took pictures in booths. Um, one of my top 10 favorite things was the new Gloriana threads. And Anne at Gloriana has just a great eye for color. And one of them she was sold out of by the time I got there. And so I have truffles is on the way, but she came up with some great new sampler colors. Um, the, gr the two greens here and the, and the brown, she had two greens and, and two browns. And then the, the two on the edges, the teal, what is that? Vintage teal and cherry tart. I had never noticed before, but I saw them and I was like, oh, those are so pretty. And so I have all of these on my site for sale. And then this week I'm gonna work on ordering silks from Anne just so I can carry a lot of her of her silks they're lovely to work with and she has a ton of great colors if you like to work on samplers and prims and it's just been one of my goals this year to to start carrying more of her silks I do carry quite a few of the thread gatherer silks as well and those are up and they're just listed individually so you can buy you know just the skeins that you want they're not in packs or anything like that so that was number one I didn't really get a chance to talk to Anne which I was sorry about because she's lovely the B company was one of my favorite finds at market and probably the new the person that's new to me that I'm most excited about. Delphine and her husband, and now I can't remember his name, came from France and they sell these buttons that they cut with a laser cutter and she designs them and they have kits as well. And I'm gonna show a few packs here. This is um, some little sheet buttons 
And this is actually like, she packages with real fabric and real ribbon to make them look really cute. And the thing is, they're really inexpensive. These buttons are like $5 and they're so, so cool. So you get a little piece of linen here in the bottom and ribbon and then the little bird houses. And I've got video that you'll see in a bit of what her booth looked like and what her products are like. I got in, I don't know, I ordered maybe like a dozen different types of buttons and they blew out. And within hours, I was out of some of them. And so I put in a huge order with her this week and she's working on it in France and will ship to me soon. But uh, she's just a lovely, lovely lady. And I just, I love her products. They're so reasonable. They make great gifts and they're just kind of a one of a kind thing. And so she and I are talking about maybe that she'll come up with something that's exclusive to my shop in terms of buttons or a kit or something like that. So watch more for her, the bee company. I really liked the Black Dog Sampler from Scarlet House. There were quite a few really nice, there were quite a few really nice reproduction samplers at market, which is great to see that a lot of different people are kind of doing reproduction samplers. And this one I really liked. It, it's simple, but it's, just, it's also kind of different. And the colors just were really pretty. Tanya, of course, always has beautiful charts and I have in, I think most of her things. What I've had to do Okay, so next year I just have to buy way more of everything. <laughs> you don't know if something's gonna sell, but really everything sold. And so when I was buying like a dozen of something, I need to probably next year make that 24 of something just to make sure that I have enough, you know, because like I said, some of the stuff, I, I put it all up, what day was it? Tuesday night, I got, had every almost everything up on my site that I had come home from market with. And then by Wednesday morning at 7.30, a lot of it was gone. And I had to quick get up and like adjust and call people. I was calling people at 7.30 in the morning. Can I get more? Can I get more? And so a lot of it's either has already come in and I'm back in stock on all that stuff or it's on the way to me. And so I just need to, I need to order more next year. Taylor's beeswaxers, I also was pretty excited about. Taylor is Stacy Nash's eighth grade daughter and I interview her also and you'll be able to watch that in a bit. She... Uh, you know, I don't know if it was market last year, but at a market, she was like, you know what? I want to contribute too. I want to make something too. And she makes these lovely beeswaxers and they're made out of un, you know, processed beeswax. So they're, they're kind of that antique brown color. And she just does a really great job with the packaging and the, the molding and the picking out of the designs and things. Here's the deal. Taylor, it wants to buy a horse. So this is what she's doing to get herself a horse. So if you want to support a little girl's pony dreams, you know, buy these from me, buy them from Stacy Nash directly on our Etsy store, buy them from your store, but do buy them, give them as gifts and let's help Taylor get a horse. She does talk more about it in her video. Stacy Nash's booth is always one of my favorites. She just really comes up with cute, cool designs. She had a slug this year, which you'll have to check out on my site one of her Animal Crackers pieces. I couldn't decide from Stacey Nash's booth. So I like the Harriet Brown Redwork pincushion. And she had the original sampler there and it's very, very tiny stitches. And I just really like the sparseness of it. Just the simple red. She finished hers into like a big long pincushion, but you obviously could frame it too. It was beautiful. And then she also had um, a pomegranate, summer pomegranate, needle book that you get the instructions on how to do the finishing and I show it in the video also. So I was trying to do a tiebreaker between these two items and I was like, okay, so let's pretend somebody makes you something and gifts it to you. Which one of these would you most be thrilled to get? And honestly, I still could not decide. So I'm going to say both of those two things are a tie. I was really excited to go into the Dames of the Needle booth and get some linen. I think I was one of the first people in there when I went on Friday. And I got some fabrics. Ooh. Oh, they're so pretty. They even, they smell good. They smell like kind of lavender, but she has beautiful fabrics. I carry her trims and I got some of her velvets in too for finishing. And so those velvets are also up in the Nashville section on my website, but I'm going to be ordering more probably this week. She said it would take maybe a couple of weeks to get it in, but she has lots of these types of colors that she's willing to do. They're a little bit more expensive than other brands of hand-dyed linens. 
they're worth it. I, as a stitcher, if I saw this, I would, I would have a hard time not buying a quarter yard of each. I just think they're super practical, very well done. They have, you know, with my Wabi Sabi fabrics, I try to make it so that they look a little bit grungy. And I feel like she does too, where you get some of this just modeling and it looks kind of, you know, not dirty, but you know, old and vintagey. So Dames of the Needle, linen. I loved Chessie and Me's Sarah's Basket. She did a reproduction sampler. What is it? Sarah, like Omer? Sarah, I can't remember. And the flower basket in the reproduction sampler is this floral section of, that floral section is in the original, but she finished it as its own chart. So you can kind of finish just a piece of a reproduction sampler. I love the way she finished it. I ordered some at market and they accidentally basically doubled my, number of the reproduction sampler and forgot to give me a bunch of the, the flowers so they're on the way and you can actually order them on my site and I'll send them when they're in but it's really 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 cool very unusual and, and unique okay a Deventer duo was one of and this might be I don't know if I had to pick something that was my favorite at market if I could only buy one thing this would be right up there um, GGR and Needlework Press got together and did you get two reproduction samplers in the same booklet. I love the look of them. I love the colors. Um, they're Netherlands samplers and how I just, they knock me out. They knock me out. And so that you get both in the same booklet, which is a great deal. And they give you a little bit of the history on the back, but um, check that one out. Actually, I mean, Needlework Press, their booth nailed it. They had tons of great stuff this year with reproduction samplers. And you'll find those in the Nashville section on my site too. Um, they had some really great samplers. Where Liberty Dwells, I think, was my favorite with thy needle and thread piece. And I do a little bit in Brenda's booth, so you'll be able to see all of her models. I really liked, I didn't notice when I was looking at the pin cushion that the quilted part of it is actually cross-stitched. It's not how it's finished. It's you actually cross-stitch the quilting part of it, which I thought was very clever. I really liked that. And the colors were really nice. They're small. So they would be, you know, kind of a good weekend project or a week long project to just knock those out and really, really pretty. All of her stuff is great. She, and she had so much of it. I think she had like 10 new things and I liked it all, but I think that was probably my favorite. I think it was probably my favorite. Okay, and then the last item I had to go into 11 because there just were too many things is just the hands across the sea booth in general. I was trying to think of a good analogy for what it's like to go into a booth with that many enormous, wonderful samplers. And it's kind of like if you went to a rock concert and they had 10 stages set up with 10 different rock and roll bands and they were all playing their best song at the same time. That's what it's like, <laughs> where you can hardly even take it in. You don't even know where to look first. You don't know what to focus on, but you're, it's just like overload of excitement and joy. And so do check out the Hands Across the Sea samplers. I was able to get my hands on some of her charts that are out of print that she, I don't remember what the story was, if she found them or it's like, I don't remember what the story was, but she ended up having a bunch of these charts that she thought she was out of. And so do look at my site. Those are limited to what I have on hand. And when they're gone, they really are gone. And so do make sure to get them. I did talk to, um, I did talk to Nicola about what because I, I had a few people ask like, hey, why do why do designers sometimes discontinue charts? And I think it's a good question. And I, I already pretty much knew the answer. And not every designer does. Some designers just always make everything forever and ever. And some decide that they're just going to do what they do. Now, some of the designers that it's mo mo a lot of times it's the designers that have their their charts professionally printed. And the thing is, when you pay somebody to professionally print your chart, you're making a humongous commitment because you might be saying like, hey, I need 2,000 of these. And then that's how you get a, the best price for getting them printed. So let's say, you know, over two years, you sell out of all 2,000 charts. The question becomes, do you order another 2,000? Will you sell another 2,000? 
in two years, you've also come out with other designs. And so number one, where do you store them all? And number two, are you going to be able to sell enough again to make another printing worthwhile? I think it's good motivation to make sure that you grab things when they come out. Um, Nicola's do go out of print. Blackbird Designs has things go out of print. But even Kathy Barrick, who does her, I think she does her own printing. If her distributor decides to not carry something anymore, she also discontinues it. And so I mean, we all know what it's like to miss out on something. So if you really love something, sometimes what I do is I think like, okay, let's say this went out of print tomorrow and I couldn't get it. Would I be super, super disappointed and regretful? And if I am, then it's like, why don't I just pick that up so I make sure that that doesn't happen? Okay, so that's my top 10. Top 11, but not top also, because there were lots and lots of great things. It's really hard to say, like, what the best thing is, and it's so much to look at. Everybody did a great job. Somebody was asking, like, what do you think, how did market go this year? And I feel like it was a solid market. Like, you went into booths. Everybody was on their on their game that there weren't any where it was like mm, mm, Not my favorite Solid it was a super solid market and it really is hard to say like I've had a few people say like what was your favorite thing? And it's like I don't even know sometimes you do have like a clear favorite and this time there just was a lot of great stuff Oh, I missed one HL's moth HL's moth by Kathy Barrick. She I I always like what she does I actually helped her find the antique sampler for this on eBay. And I was like, this is so Kathy Barrick, this moth. It's totally her colors. It's kind of quirky. It really did have the seams running down each side. She said she couldn't tell if it was a book cover or what the story was with why somebody made this moth, but it really is cool. You can also get a little kit to make it into a necklace by stitching it on 40 count over one. And um, it's really great. Okay, that is my list of 11. So my giveaway from last Stitchy Tube, which was a long, 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 long time ago, is you got um, a sampler and antique needlework quarterly that I had another copy of and a mason jar, like a reproduction mason jar. And my question was, what needs a clean out at your house? Because I was talking about Marie Kondo, I think, at that time. And the winner is Anna Kaleido. And she said she really needs to clean her son's room. He moved out. And she has filled it with other things, and so she needs to clean it out. So, Anna, get a hold of me at my email address below and give me your address, and I will send you your goodies. For next time, I've got a great giveaway. I won, or I was gifted, I don't know, I got a, for, for a purchase at the Primitive Hair uh, some things um, that I could resell if I wanted to or just give away. And I decided to give them away, and I have more that actually came in that packet. But the giveaway for this next time is this um, Winter Bird cross stitch chart and it's free stitching which is cool so it's got directions on how to do that it's got this really cool um, Victorian Christmas pinwheel chart and you'll also get this little bunny hand painted palette thread palette um, and so that's what you'll get oh and that's a that's a $24 value just on this and so um, the question then for next time is what uh, what has been your favorite thing that you've seen that's come out of market? If you haven't really paid attention or you're not sure, just say, I don't know, and you'll still be entered. And that will be given away next Stitchy Tube. Next time on Stitchy Tube. Okay, so right now, this is the part you've all been waiting for. Why do I even <laughs> talk and talk and talk? This is what you came to see. One of my most popular videos was last year's Nashville, and I did a bunch of interviews. <clears throat> and so I did it again this year went to different rooms and I was really having to try to cram them in because like I said, I was so busy and I did not get to leave my booth as often as I would have liked to. And so these are interviews. I tried to do different people than I did last year. I think there are a few repeats and there are people I really would have liked to have talked to that I just couldn't make it happen. I either like went to their booth to film them and they weren't there or I went to film them and their booth was full of people or I just never even made it back so you know maybe I'll catch you next time there were some designers that it's like oh hey hey I'll look for you later and we as we just like pass in the hall and I would never got to talk to those people so it's I mean it's it was fun but I wish we had like a whole week so we really could get time to talk to everybody so here are the interviews in no particular order enjoy hey everybody it's Gary Parr from Hi. Fiber Talk Yes. The great podcaster, and you never get to see his face, and there's his no. face. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know you have come to market before. 
Um, what do you really like about you know market coming to market? What do you? What's your favorite part of it? Well, obviously seeing all the new things. But uh, what, what's fun, and, and we just did a video with Teresa, with samplers, is the things that you learn. Right. You, you pick up all kinds of little things about culture's past that, uh, uh, you know, I just file away. They make good conversation. And oh, my gosh, totally. Weird and spots, yeah. To me, it's just amazing that these little girls created art that it now hangs in museums. Right. It's just, that's to me, that's amazing. Yes. And what? tell everybody what you're working on right now. Working on Hands Across the Sea, Sarah Brazier. And how much, what percentage are you done with? <laughs> oh, maybe 15%. Okay, yeah. well, that's a good start. But I brought it with me. Oh, you I did? It with me. I'm determined to stitch okay. while I'm on the road here. Yeah, yes. okay. Because normally I can't, normally I can't bring big pieces like that on a plane. That's so, right, that's right. So, Sometimes uh, you got to have something little. Stand, or magnifier, chart. Scroll frames, the whole bit. Yep. And so now you're are you're interviewing a lot of different people. Where can people find the videos that you're shooting this uh, weekend? We, we talk fiber dot com. Okay. Is where we uh, we post all of them. And then if you're a YouTube subscriber, of course they'll be on the floss tube. Uh, if you're a floss tube subscriber, so they'll be there. Too. Yep. And so everybody should check out Gary's podcast because they're really cool. He does he interviews designers and other people in the industry and talks talks fiber. I guess that's why yep. you're called that's what fiber we do. talk. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, twice thanks. twice weekly. Wednesday and Sunday. Yep. Well, thanks for stopping by, Gary. It was great to see you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. I'm in the Primitive Hairs booth, and it really is one of my favorite booths at Market. I know I showed some of these things last year, but you can't see them too many times. The Black Pearl, though, I don't think was at Market last year. Um, one of the things that's really cool are these printed fabrics, and she's got this great new book that has a bunch of designs in it, and look at how pretty that is. The fabric is printed, and then you just stitch on the side. And so like, here's another example of a piece that uses the printed fabric. And uh, here, look at these cool moths. And this one, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of got some glitter to it too. Oop, I gotta focus a little better here. It's shiny, and again, it's got the printed fabric. I just think that's the neatest. Now, one of my favorite things is this series of animals. So you've got the fox here and the hedgehog, and I think those I showed last year. But now she's got a fawn and a really cool owl, and of course a squirrel, because you gotta have a squirrel. And again, printed fabric, and I've got those in my shop, and they're very, very cool. And lots of spooky Halloween stuff, and pumpkin pie, and some witchy things, so that's really cool. Now I'm gonna try not to make you dizzy, we're gonna go over here and look at the hand-dyed fabrics. They're so cool printed fabric. Um, I know for me anyway, all of the, the um, printed fabric with the snowflakes, everybody really likes that. And this is one of my favorite pieces. And I sold a lot of this one last year, the old winter, with that beautiful stag. It's always so much fun to see what everybody brings. And I mean, luckily I came today and she still has things, some things left because it was so busy yesterday. And you've got hand-dyed fabric and pretty bee people. All right. I'll see you guys as soon as I get to the next shop. Okay, here I am in Lottie Da's booth, and Lottie Da isn't here. <laughs> I don't know where Lori is. Is she out running around? A little bit. She'll, okay. She'll be back soon. I got some of these really cool, um, uh, what do you call them, scissor blocks. And these are some of her new pieces here. I got those too. And it's always so much fun to see the models. And there's a reproduction. Really, really cute. And then she also has these neat um, pin cushions that she did a series of six, Quilts and Quakers. And I love them displayed in the sewing drawer. I, I have a bunch of those at home that I got a long time ago for pretty cheap. And if you want to buy them these days, they're very expensive. I got a few of these kits. She, I think she had a limit of six, so I think I only got six. Um, and then these other pieces I think I have in the shop too. They're very pretty. Lighting in uh, Nashville is always tricky because these rooms are kind of dark, and so people bring in their own lights. And uh, that helps some. That does help some. And look at these little bunnies that kind of stand up on their own. Really cute. This one's older, but people really like it still. And it's, I've seen it done in different colors. And it's really, really neat. So I'll back up here so you can see. 
All right, guys. I'll see you next booth. Sure. I post. Okay, so do you guys have like a theme song for Jen stitching it? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so let's see the back of your shirts. Everybody turn around. We should write us a Cute. theme song. Cute. Okay, back around. So, how's it going? Great, it's good. What'd you find that you That's like? What have one. you bought the most of so far? The um, quilting bee from Blue Flower. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yep. my favorite. That's really great. Yep, I got some of that too. I, I loved her pin cushions. Yeah. The and the squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. She, and she was already out of some of that last night when I went. Yeah. We like, got, I was able to get some, but yeah. I think I've sold out of them. I saw you post it on Instagram. It was almost like Halloween, you know, where you dump all your candy yeah. out on the table and you <laughs> yeah. kind of sort through it yeah. and you posted all your stuff that you bought. Yes. Do you have anything like that? Was that your favorite piece so far? Was the bee or do you? That and there is one, the... Um, what is it? Ocean blue stocking from Kathy Berry. Uh, yeah, and favorites. I couldn't even get in her booth last oh, night, so I got to go it's back. Great. It's very pretty. And what do you guys think? Are you enjoying helping her? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. And did you, Bridget, Bridget <laughs> and Alicia, do you, do you guys like? Was there anything that you thought was like just one of your favorite things? The bee. Yeah. The quilting bee. That's my favorite. You two and you two, Bridget. Yeah. Mm, it's really pretty. Yeah, very very pretty. I think she I did like she sell out? Too. I don't yeah, remember. She sold out. So. Yeah. Good for yeah, her. That's it's very very cute. Yes, she's doing great. So what's your plan for the rest of the weekend then? I don't know. We stayed up until like 1.30 posting last night. So we'll stay up tonight and post and then come around tomorrow and do, you know, see if there's anything we forgot. Yeah, that sounds good. I think I've got most up. everything. Good. So, that I, you know, the, that I was worried about. That's awesome. So. Well, thanks for talking to us. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, Stitchy Tube Nation. <laughs> It's actually the end of day one of market on Saturday, and I didn't ever take you guys on a tour before my booth opened. And I just rearranged everything, because that's what I do, because sometimes people see stuff that they didn't see the first day. So I'm just gonna show you um, my booth and how it turned out. This is, um, of course, my Savior's Praise sampler, which was the big seller. I brought loads, and I'm hoping nobody has to go home without one. That's kind of my goal. And there's Louisa Horsey. And you can see the Jenny Bean sampler coming along there, along with my baskets. I'm gonna pan slowly so you don't get seasick. There's three of my silhouette pillows. And then um, this, this uh, sampler I've never taken to market before. So I brought it because I really like it. And it's got that little Christmas tree in the corner with the moth, which I think is just charming. There is the Sweet Temper sampler. And people are picking up the old stuff. Actually, I've already run out of um, some of the old things that I didn't really plan on running out of. Uh, sampling by Anne. I've been selling old sampler books a lot. There's Mary Bate. That's a reproduction of mine too. And Fractor Friends, which I only get to see some of the time. You can come in, come in. And then there is Mercy Goodhart. You can come in. And there's a bunch of Jingle Bells. And those actually have sold really well too. And then over here, I just moved a Quaker sampler, the Ragamuffin sampler, because I'm down to my last five charts. And I imagine they'll sell out quickly tomorrow and then that will just go to the back so people don't feel disappointed. But those can be ordered from Hoffman and Yarn Tree. And then, so here's this table here. I kind of had a cool setup this year. Uh, I got a whole bunch of needle minders that are really cool. And then this sampler is Carolyn Sire. And that is with a model stitcher right now. And so that one will be released probably in April sometime. I just flipped this box the other way so I could put my books in it. I had it kind of up and down like shelves and I had some things in it. But like I said, I like to move stuff around so it seems fresh. I sold a whole bunch of my fabric today. That's all that's left of my linen on the left and my Ada on the right. And then there's a whole bunch of my cotton hand dyed fabric. And I brought some Brenda Keys charts too because they're really cool. And that's the last of my mason jars, and I've got a bunch of rusty keys, too. Um, day one, I was not open. Okay, so <laughs> the, the art in the rooms is horrible. We don't know what it is of. It's very abstract and weird. So I just put scrap of paper over it so it doesn't distract from the beauty of the samplers. But um, it went really, really, really well. My throat is sore, and I am so tired. So I skipped out on dinner tonight. And I'm just gonna kind of try to kick back. So, but look at I got more bodies in the booth. So, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay. On the, uh, oh, that's fine. All right, you're on. Hi. Hey, how are you? everybody. This is Delphine Mongrand. Yes. And she's from France. France. Yes. And she's here in the United States for the National Needlework Market. And I hadn't met Delphine before, but she's got the cutest buttons and frames and kits and things. Thank and this is you. the first. This is the first time you've come to the market. This is the first time. Yes. 
Yes. So what do you think? Uh, it's a great show, really great in the hotel, which is a really funny way to present our items with nice people like you. Yes, and <laughs> so now it's really cute. Yeah, it's a really nice place. We love it. Do you um? Do you have anything that was like your best seller of the show or something? Well, we have some buttons like the ship buttons mm -hmm. and and um, the little mini houses. Uh, we also have. But the little, I don't know if you're going to I'll see them or not, but we have the, the house, the Christmas houses that are coming as little charts with the house. To with build. the house to build. Yes, yes. yes. And they're very, very cute. Now, do you, are these made in, Fran in so France? They are. We have a little workshop. It's a really small, tiny place. You make uh, them? We, do you make them? We do make Oh, okay. Everything. You make them. Yes, we do. We, I do design everything and I have two people working with me. Now, what uh, what kind of wood is it? What kind of wood do you use? It's a uh, it's it's um it's like medium, and it's painted one with a special uh -huh. painting. Yeah. That doesn't go away with water. If you put put, put them in the water, they will not go. Oh, how away. neat! Um, you can't use them on clothing because wood is is fragile. Right. And uh, and yes, I design everything. And the pack of buttons can be your own design, so you can just use the design to make your own little stitch trays. Yeah, she's got and a lot of And we have some cross stitch too. Yeah. And so people don't only use these for cross stitch. It's oh, so you no, can use they it for like quilting for any, and crafts. Yeah, it's, and, and yeah, it's scrapbooking too. You can use them for greeting cards, any little projects, craft projects. Yeah. To me, um, one of the cool things is that you could really use it as a gift for like a friend. Oh, you know yes, what I mean? That could, it's, and they are quick to do like those ones for example yes this is the design mm -hmm. so you just copy everything it takes a few minutes really. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out really, your, really yes cute. and and it's it's a it's a nice present and it's not too complicated and this too one's a little birdhouse right yes they yeah, are they're really, like really frames cute. that you can use like those ones that you can use for the buttons and you can frame all the buttons. I'm going to take a quick shot of the buttons, too, in the packaging. Um, and you said Shepherd's Bush has used some of these buttons, yes, right? Yes, do. I'll show you those ones. Oh, okay. She's got some here. So I'll just yes, kind of pan so you can see. They're packaged really nicely. And um, gosh, they're so cute. You kind of just want to get one of everything. Okay, I'll come over this way. She used oh, this one, which is really popular, and this one, too. How cute. How cute. So do you think you might come back to a market again sometime? Oh yes, for sure. Awesome. I, I am just exhibiting at the Houston show, which is more like a quilt show. Right. And um, one in uh, Ontario near Los Angeles. Okay. Which is a quilt show too. Yeah. So this is my first cross stitch. Show. Right. It will probably be the only one because I want to work right. with you, with the shops. That's so. right. And so do you, um, can, can find how can they, how items. can people find you online if they want to find We have you? a website. Okay. We have a list of our distributors too. Okay, great. And, um, and we have an Instagram account and Facebook and Pinterest. And All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing everything Thank with us, you. Delvin. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Stacey, you're a wonderful designer. <laughs> you make the most beautiful slugs. <laughs> Look at that beautiful slug. Her models are so cute. Come on, people. Come on, people. Look at how pretty. And this is really cool because it opens up. Oh, and flip it on the back. Oh, how pretty is that? That's actually stitched, guys. All right, that one might go in my pocket. Very, very pretty. And, and I think she's had a good show. I think she forgot a model is what I heard. There was a rumor. Okay. Don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. I just love things that are joined together like that. This is not stitched on two different pieces of linen and then made into a pillow. And it's stuffed with sawdust, I betcha. Absolutely. Feels like it. Yes, sawdust it is. is the only way to stuff. I used to use walnut shells, and now it's like, what? No, Cause they, Yeah, they're in magnets, really cool magnets. Stacy has asked not to be filmed, so we are going to... Nobody move. wants to see that. Just do this really quick. Oh, oh there was her face. <laughs> <laughs> really cute little thread palette. Oh, hey, and you know what? I want to interview you about your beeswax. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, see, she's brave. Okay, so this is Stacy Nash's daughter, Taylor? Yes. Okay, I got it. Yes. And she's got the most beautiful waxers. So tell us about making your waxers. Um, so the beeswax is like all natural, 100% pure beeswax. And the reason it's so dark is because it is unrefined, so they don't filter out all of the, like, it's not exactly dirt, but it's just, like, 
you know, bits and pieces of stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so do you, and you get, where do you get your beeswax? Um, it is from a place in Iowa, so we just have to order it online and it'll come in like a week or so. And how many different like beeswax designs do you think you've done already? Um, I'd say maybe f around 15. Yeah, and how did you get into it? Um, so I, I think it was two years ago at Market, I really wanted to contribute and just like do something. Yeah, because so, you come to Market a lot yes, of times. Yeah, I do. And I had, a, I had mom help me. And she um, was online and she just saw like beeswax, like molds of people that actually did waxers. And she was like, well, you could do these. And so then we ordered a couple molds and ordered some beeswax. And then I just kind of picked it up and started. Cool. So I'm going to film your beeswax. And tell, but keep talking. Tell us like what you're doing with the money you're making from your beeswax. So I am getting the money and I am saving up for a horse. She's getting, and do you have a horse picked out or do you? No, no we okay. Are, I don't want to start looking now because then I'm going to find one and then fall in love with it and then we won't be able to get it yet because we don't have fences up and everything. But Do you have a name picked out? Um, I have a couple. Okay, so like hit us with a couple of your horse names. Um, let's see, I like like Diesel and Dooley. Okay, cool. And things like that and stuff. And I like Shazam. Shazam. She likes Shazam a lot. And just like, I want different names, like unique horse names. Right. I can name, oh, I, we want to name a miniature donkey Waffles. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to suggest Clarence. I think oh, Clarence yeah. would be an <laughs> I like Clarence. <laughs> so, so, so pretty. Well, it's really cool that you've kind of dipped your toe into the community. Do you stitch too? Um, I want to start. I have a little uh, small sampling picked up that I want to stitch. Awesome. Maybe have a pattern out. And do you do you think it's cool that your mom does this for a living? Yeah, I really yeah. like it. And in, what do you think about market? I market's probably one of my favorite times of the year. Oh, it's that's like, awesome! It's like a holiday for me. Kind of. Cool. Well, it was nice. I'm I'm glad that people are getting to see your pretty face, <laughs> and we will hopefully see you again next year, right? Yes. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, right, guys. I have to show you this too. Look at how pretty the sampler is, and that was the little pillow I showed earlier. It's so super fine. Like the stitches are tiny. Okay, really now right. goodbye. Floss tube, here she is. Everybody Hello. knows who this is. This Hello. is Janine from Acorns and Threads. <laughs> and she's in my booth. Yay! And you came a long way for the show. I did. And I, my, I flew, and boy, are my arms <laughs> tired. <laughs> so um, now it's Sunday morning. What do you? How has the market gone for you so far as a oh. shop owner? Oh, my God. Crazy, incredible, amazing. I'm out of suitcase space. And I haven't picked everything up, and I haven't gone anywhere yet. Yeah, so um, I bet you're excited <clears throat> to get all this stuff back to the shop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> People then, are excited. I can't wait to, for everyone to see the great, great things that I brought back. Do you have, like, a, an, a store event for people to come and see the news? We do. We have our market days, Nashville market days, are Friday and Saturday. Okay. We and open we'll, at 10 a.m., Okay. Unless you're a special Acorn Collector Club member. Uh, oh, and then oh, and there then might what? be a benefit. Okay. Watch your email. How do you become a member? <clears throat> you became a member by buying a special coupon book. Oh, okay. And that's over for this year, but mm -hmm. we'll do it again next year, and you can become a member next year. And then you get special goodies and maybe get to go to events early and um, things like that. As well as it's a coupon book. So you get to turn in a coupon for 20% off something okay. every month. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So now do you have something at market that you saw like that just blew you away that you were like, oh, this is just one of the best things here? <laughs> <laughs> the Savior's Praise? <laughs> Which one? I love Savior's Praise. It's really done pretty oh, well, guys. Oh my gosh. It is fabulous. I love all the little motifs. <laughs> All the different things, the fact that the border is not the same. I love the house. The ship. Yeah, Who the ship. Who doesn't love a ship? I know. And all the deer. I'm a sucker for deers. Yes. I just love everything. Oh, and the little bees. I love that one deer is going the wrong way. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> They're all, and the bell, and then the bees are buzzing. They're too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like other it. things with that. My goal was to just make it fun to stitch. Full yes. of discoveries. Good. Well, yes. I think you did that. Well, good. Yeah, I think you did that. And so, are you tired yet? Um, no, no, I will not be tired. I will not <laughs> allow myself to be tired until Monday. You can be tired Monday. When I get on the plane. 
Oh, All I have excellent. to be is awake enough to get off the plane in Phoenix and change to get on the other plane. Now, so <clears throat> not everybody lives in Portland, so if somebody wanted to find your shop, where would they go online? I have a website, www.acornsandthreads.com. Well, good luck this but next I don't, week. But I don't yes. have a shopping cart, so you have to call or email. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Thank we'll see you. you on the internet. All right. All right, bye-bye. Bye. We are in the booth of bum, 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 yes. bum, 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 bum. Better Photoshop me good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your name is Pauline from um, like Apple something. It's I don't somewhere know, down somewhere. there. Yeah. Yeah, so this is Paulette. Hey. And she hey guys. has done floss tooth videos. I've done two. I think I, you should do more. I, I, I I don't know how you guys do the the floss tube thing. It's, what do you mean? You just like just well, like like stay up with I it? I feel or? like it takes so long. It takes so long. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a day. Like for it me, is, it's an entire workday. It is, but it's work like day. a day for me for like four and a half minutes, and it's, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm like, okay. Well, we'll put I'll put you on mine. I'll do the work, and you you just okay, rest yes, on your laurels yes. <laughs> and sponge off of other people. What are laurels exactly? <laughs> I, don't, is, I don't know. I don't know. Isn't it like I leaves like or something? I don't know. Okay, so we'll figure it out. how was market? It was great. It was great. And was, you sold out of, did you sell out of everything? I, no, I sold out of wool and flax, okay, yellow we'll, polka dots, box few. Did we sell? Oh, and salt boxes. My salt box Polaroids. Yeah. yeah. So the Polaroid is such a, a clever idea. I'll Thank get over there, guys, you. but you got to see like her yeah. stacks. How many more, an, are there animals you think that are more prone to stacking than others? Like, if you could pick in nature, like, which animals would be the best stackers? You know, anything with legs or anything without legs stack very well. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think would be, like, your least, your least likely animals to stack? to stack? Like, to design. Like, if somebody well, said, hey, I think you should do whales. I did get, well, I, I have thought about the whales. <laughs> um, I might actually do a whale, okay. a whale stack. Someone suggested... My mom would hate me for saying this because it's her phobia. Someone suggested cockroaches okay. with, with the bottom one being smashed. Oh, so no. That may not stack as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> there will be a lot of 3371 so in may that one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe no cockroaches then. Yeah, maybe no cockroaches. And now, okay, so this one kind of reminds me of Miss Bingley's library, sort of. Well, is that, it's is a it follow-up. Kind of, yes, okay, it it's is. a follow-up. So it, it's also a quote from Pride and Prejudice. Okay, Gentleman's Daughter. Do you do you yes. read a lot of that kind of? No, I watch a lot of those movies. Okay. I actually have the books, and I've tried, and then my daughter got me the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies one one oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've not attempted it yet, but okay, that might be in my reading Yeah, picture. yeah, yeah. So now, are you more likely to read a book or listen to it? Read it. Yeah. yeah. I love audiobooks. I love, I love that, but... I don't do that so much anymore because I don't sit still anymore. And then, so like if you're reading a book and you're three chapters in and you go, you know what, this isn't very good, do you persist anyway because you feel like you need to finish something you started or do you throw it in the trash? Well, half and half. I, like I feel, I still have PTSD from East of Eden and I skipped through a lot because he's oh, super wordy. Yeah. And isn't that the name of the book? East of Eden? Yeah, East of Eden. Yeah. Yep, Steinbeck? Yes. Yeah, right. And I was so guilty flipping through pages and pages and oh, pages no. because it was... And then I felt bad and I'd go back and read more. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a really book. a trash a, a trash the book girl. <laughs> right. But I I don't know. I've, I've been known to maybe stop like three quarters of the way and go, I can't. I, my life's too short. Yes. I, I to read to, a crappy book. I need book. to move on to something else and I have to give myself permission to do that and then go to therapy. Okay. So. <laughs> I think a lot of people re listen to books on um, audio tape while they stitch. Yes. I wish you could yeah. read, take a bath, and stitch at the same time. That would I be like the best. You, the best books on audio books are Jan Karen's Mitford series read by John McDonough. Okay. Think, oh man, he will put you in the best mood yeah because he's he'll even sing the hymns that she mentions in her book nice i think it was like the the new the latest captain kangaroo is what i read oh. somewhere that was his job whenever captain kangaroo revamped really? it so mm. his voice is amazing so you have if you can you I'm sing a little or you, i can <laughs> but i will not oh no come on <laughs> no no i will all right. No. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, uh, good luck getting home, and glad Thank it market was a success for you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. I'm in Brenda Gervais' booth. 
I, I have to say that like in our household, um, Brenda Gervais has become our like euphemism for something that's grand and wonderful. And so like sometimes, I, it's true. So like, um, you know, I might say like, oh, I got my order from Brenda Gervais today. And or we'll all go, ooh, Brenda Gervais, Brenda Gervais. We just like your name. We just like your name because it sounds very fancy. Okay, so these are very pretty. I don't know what that one's called, but I think I'm Curry getting House it. Sampler. Curry House Sampler. Okay, and then there's this one, and that's a Shakespeare quote in a tedious sampler, so would her mind. I can't remember which play that, that is from, but it's very, very cute. And she has this really cool display, too, that's got these kind of pulleys. And All right, and on to the next. Pretty, pretty colors. Oh, my gosh, I didn't notice. Okay, so this one, I thought that was quilted, but it's actually stitched to look like a quilt. You see that? That's so neat. And yeah, summer's really not that far away when you think about it. Beautiful sampler, beautiful borders. Cute little house, cute little flowers. And this one I really like too, it's in a tray. And I think you can get those, can you get those from Brenda directly? The or trays? Just, or, yeah, or your shop? Yeah, needle workshops are ordering them Oh, as well. okay, cool. So either or. And do they come painted? No, they're unfinished. Okay, they're unfinished. Everybody can paint. Everybody can paint. And another cute little tray, padded. And I just love all her little accoutrement, her little accessories that she has. She has these really cool boxes too as display cases. And she, I, I talk about like how crazy like people from the 1800s would think we were, because we love stuff that looks like it's ready for the dump. And they would think like, what are you guys crazy? You make new stuff look like it's old. Very, very cute. And actually this is really one of my favorite I'm not a pink girl, but I love that bunny. It's so, so cute. And he could not be chubbier. So, so cute. All right, well, I'm gonna be bringing some of this stuff home and I wish you guys could be here, but we'll see you later, bye. I feel like I need to make up a song. Kathy Barrick, Kathy Barrick. Is what? Here. Is here, Kathy Barrick is here. She sold out of this one, but I'm getting some in the mail, so it's okay. Wonderful things from Kathy, of course. Who would expect any less? Um, look at this cute lady on the stocking. She's an embroideress, and I love the pointy toes. I am just, I don't know if you know, I, I'm almost done. I'm stitching the Quaker stocking Are you? over one and making it as a tiny, tiny little thing. And it's oh. so, I'll send you a picture when it's done. Cool, I'd love to. I'm gonna hang back because so you can see like the stockings they're really really cute and then she's got um, this one which is a reproduction and it's very very pretty some of those motifs would make great pin cushions and such and then this one is really cute dear madam your tea is exceedingly fine I had rather drink tea than the finest of wine is that from a book yes it is which book is it I don't remember. Danielle Steele something maybe <laughs> Remember Danielle Steele? I don't like even know if she writes anymore. And then this is another one in the series of the moons. There's the, what's the Santa one called? Dear Santa. Dear Santa. And this one's called? Mother Nature. Mother Nature. And look at all the animals she's got, especially rabbits. She's very, very sweet. Now this one, I got to take partial credit for this one, I feel like. Can I give you credit on the chart? Did you? Shut up. I did. That's awesome. I have them in the room. <laughs> so this popped up the actual needlework piece showed up on eBay and I told Kathy about it and she got the original because I thought it looked very Kathy. But she also made it into a little um, necklace. How cool is that? Okay, and so then of course she brought some of her old things that aren't so old, but it's always fun to see them all in one place. The sheepies, the swannies, the crowies. And then um, Miss Elizabeth Perkins. Now I totally have stitched her and I need to stitch Miss Mary Hadley. Their skirts are so fine. And Cooper, of course. And Swan Garden, of course. And that one's based on an old purse, I believe. Very, very, very cute. And of course, Kathy does um, jewelry too. Did you sell some jewelry this weekend? I sold a ton. She sold a ton of jewelry. Yeah. Oh, here's the, so here's the Dear Santa. I like this one too. The, is it Dear Heart? I can't remember what that's called. Yes. yes, okay. Yes. And then Rodney and Rebecca are right here. And those are so cute. And the Robin's song. 
don't remember what the robin one is. Where? The, the robin in his oh, nest. Little robins. Okay, little robins. Oh, yeah. And they're so, so cute. I never noticed that little pool of swans before. They're flapping around in there. Super cute. And she sold some jewelry, so let's take a look at the jewelry real quick. It's made out of bits and parts from France, I seem to remember, Antique yes. Jewelry. Antique jewelry. And she takes it apart and puts it back together with her American ingenuity. Mm -hmm. So it's like the melding of two great nations. And it's cool because you're kind of, if you get a piece of jewelry, you're like wearing history. It's, and it's kind of fun to think about, like, who would have worn this? Did they wear it? Did they wear it to fancy parties? Did they get it as a gift from their husband? These actually have little pieces of needlework in them, which is really cool. And you can find her jewelry on her Etsy shop too. It's um, uh, French, Fre French sentiments. Yeah. And it's, oh, I'm surprised the acorn is still here. I know, me too. In fact, I kind of had you in mind for that. Really, I'll have, have to tr I'll try it on. I will try it on. Very, very, very cute. All right, good job, Kathy, as always. Thank you. And we'll see your designs again soon. Yes. Got her. Oh. The Scarlet House booth and Miss Scarlet House house is not here, but her models are here and they're very, very pretty. And it's always fun to see them. I think her choice of colors is always so cool. She uses a lot of red with brown and it looks so nice. And I love all her little finishing that she does. There's a little pin cushion. And I got a bunch of this, it's a market exclusive. And it's this cute little roll with a pin cushion and like a little uh, fob. And then I think, I'm trying to remember if this, that's what that looks like on the back. Doesn't it tuck somehow? Oh, there's a little, yeah, there's a little piece for your pins. It's a roll. It's a roll. It's a roll. And then this one sold out in 45 minutes. So I didn't get this one, but I might have it on order. I don't remember. But that is really pretty at the bottom, don't you think? And a Christmas piece, have a berry Christmas. And I've also got a picture. I've got some of these charts too that I'm bringing back and I thought this pin cushion was really, really cute. She did the, um, the edging is with pins and rickrack. And it's nice and heavy. Do you know what she stuffed this with? Is it? Lizard litter. Huh? Lizard litter? litter. Lizard litter, okay, yep. Yeah. Walnut, walnut shells. Walnut shells, yes. And this, I think this one was my favorite. I don't know why. It's so, so pretty. Is it a reproduction, this um, yes. 1840 one? Yes. And I've got those charts. Black dog sampler. Black dog sampler. It's got a little black dog. A lot of dogs in the samplers this year. There's a dog there. And then here's a dog. The lady's walking the dog. Tanya walking the dog. Oh, it's Tanya walking the dog. And then here's some more dogs. Her four dogs. Her four dogs. One, two, three, four. Three black and one brown. And then reproduction with dogs. And a reproduction with dogs. And birds. <laughs> but this one says there's probably dog hair on this, and you can get there's probably cat hair on this. I would say this show has gone to the dogs. Comes in one pack. This comes in one pack. All right. Super great to see everything all in one place. So inspiring. Here we are in the lovely lindy stitches booth with steph and this was your first market yep first market what do you have to say about that i have to say that i my brain has exploded and i don't have any more <laughs> thoughts <laughs> no it was awesome it was incredible i i loved every minute to be honest so like what was the big surprise for you being here like what was there anything about the show just in general that just like you were like wow Wow. You know, like, 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 were you surprised people knew who you were? Or were you surprised that like something in particular sold really well? Or? Um, yeah, I was really surprised that people like were doing fangirl behavior toward <laughs> me. I found that really strange because I'm, you know, just a regular person from Indiana who right is yeah. a regular human being. Right. <laughs> yes. So, so are you coming yeah. back next year? Yeah. Yeah. And what would, like, what would you, ch would you change anything or is there something you would do more of? As far as like, just what your display I did. or your designs um, or how you run things? I just have a lot more ideas. Yeah. And yes. I got a lot of advice from the shop owners and from the other exhibitors. And so, yeah, just a lot, a lot of ideas. I have little notes 
every stuck everywhere and all my uh -huh. stuff of advice I've been given. So oh, nice. Yeah. I'm, and the display looks great. Thank you. I'm going to just yeah. kind of zoom in if you want to just tell us like about, um, now this one, I recognize this verse. That's from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, that is. Yep. And that's, that's uh, that's the, uh, I'm trying to yeah. remember when he sings that. Is it on yeah. the boat? Is it on the scary um, boat? Um, no, it's not on the boat. I don't that's remember really when it is, is, but yeah. I don't remember. Nonsense, no one man is <laughs> it's foolish by the wisest man. Yep. Cool. Wonderful. And this frame is so cute. Thank you. That's why I signed a number, and they graciously gave me a coupon code for the pattern. Or not for the pattern. For the for the, for the frame. frame. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they do, like, all different colors and finishes, and it, they're a fun shop on Etsy, so. That's really cool. I work with them. And uh, I and, love... Okay, you love this, don't you? I, don't you I love was, this? I was oddling it, actually. <laughs> Where did you get a hand, a severed hand? Uh, it was at a garage sale. Really? Yeah. That is a stellar yeah. find. And do you play the circle game? Uh, like, where you have to make someone... You make somebody look at this? No. no. Okay, I'll teach you that later. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a mother's heart. Very pretty. And then these bunnies are so cute. Yes, thank you. They hopped everywhere this weekend nice was it was what was one of your biggest sellers um the bunnies yeah the bunnies are really cute the best mm -hmm. yep. they're very very cute and they're finished yep. really cute too thank you and this one i know i've seen before yep. that one yep but it's yeah. really cool to see it in person Bridge to the bows. Yep. yep and a little skunk family yes and a little cat in there yes yep i don't know if you, everybody I'm caught that i'm not sure that all the shop owners that bought that pattern noticed that that was yep. a cat yeah but... it's kind of like stella luna right yeah 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 I, I gotta read this. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Is that from something? It's just an old hymn. Oh, okay. Yep. I love you more than yep. yesterday. Yesterday. You, you got, got on my nerves. nerves. I thought, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> and tomorrow you probably also will get on my nerves. <laughs> That's real. The cat on that is really cute. Thank I'm gonna you. zoom in on that. That is my cat. Aww. Do I miss? I'm sure you miss your cats. I miss too. my cats. I, I talked about bringing zero, but he poops in the car, so it would have been a long six-hour drive. Slight problem. That's really cute. It's kind of like you. it's cute because it's like looks old-timey, but it's it's kind of wonky. Yep, yep, yep. We love wonky. And babies. the owls. Yep, so cute. Owls. So cute. So, do you feel like you're now like a real designer? Like, okay, this is official yeah. now. Like, yeah. it's, I've been to market. Yeah. And I now have market stories. Yes. And was there anybody that you met that you were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to blah, blah, blah. Well, the first breakfast that I ate, I went down with Beth Twist, who's become one of my friends. And yes. I love her dearly. She's and very nice. And we sat down with Barb and Alma and had breakfast. And I just, oh, you know, yep. on the inside. I, <laughs> I tried to be cool. <laughs> like... These people are the real deal. Yeah. That's awesome. It's hard to believe. It's I'm kind of on cloud nine. Well, congratulations so, on your you. first show. It seems like it was very successful, and I hope you're going home with lots of empty boxes. I think I am. Good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, we'll see Teresa. you soon. Bye. Bye. Here she Bye. is. Beth Hi. from Heartstring Samplery. The show is almost over. It's what, like 4? Is it 3.30 yes. or so? Uh, yes. It's the minutes are ticking down. I didn't think I was ever going to make it down to see Teresa. <laughs> it was a busy weekend. Holy crap. Very like, how'd busy. you guys do? Really well. Yeah? yeah? What was your big show stealer? I didn't really have one. Oh, okay. So it was like... Which was nice. Yeah. It was kind of spread out over... All six of my new designs did well. Nice. And how tired are you? Do you want me to show you? Yes. I might have to fall on the floor. Okay. Ready? Go. <laughs> that is sad. That's so sad. <laughs> That's, actually, I, actually, I feel the I feel same. Great. <laughs> I feel the same. But I'm, no, it's, it's like, who was I talking to? It's like yeah. energizing and super tired, tired at the same tired time. Tired and wired. Yeah. Tired and wired. I'm exhausted because I'm an introvert and I've been extroverting all weekend, but I am so energized and inspired. So do you, now when you, the weekend's over, do you come away with like ideas for other charts you want to do or do I you? I don't have ideas for about a day yeah maybe two depending on how wiped out I am when I get home mm -hmm. and it's not even specific things like I didn't see a motif oh I want to go do my own version of that right it's just the creative energy yeah 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 hits me in a couple of days and then I have like all of these ideas suddenly pop in but there's there's a lull yeah that happens first yeah now um how many do you know how many years you've been coming to market this is my fifth year okay 
and totally worth it. Oh, yes. Yes. I wish we could do it a couple times a year. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even I think about it that Am right I crazy? Now. Yeah, but you are it's, it's crazy. so fun, and I look forward to it so much. It's it's a lot of work to get here. A lot of I don't think people really realize how much work. And the thing that I think is that it's really hard to be creative and also organized. organized. I have a really good right brain, left brain balance. Okay. And you know when you do those little internet yeah, yeah, yeah. quizzes, I always come out like, oh, you're very well balanced. And so I have this side of me that loves spreadsheets and software and planning. And, mm -hmm. and then I have the side of me that's like, oh, color and balance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it comes together perfectly in cross stitch. Now, if you were a cookie, what kind of cookie would you be? Snickerdoodle. And why is that? Because it's a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just that's <laughs> that was your mind. first. That was your first. <laughs> like, uh, Snickerdoodle. All right, Snickerdoodle. that's fair enough. All right. So uh, have or a death by dark chocolate. I'll take it. Okay. Well, have a safe trip back, and we'll see you Thank on Boston, of course. Yes. So you take will. care and safe travels. Bye bye. Of market. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, I know a lot of people rewatch these again and again, and it is fun to see people's booths and what they look like. So you would think <laughs> that I would be sick of stitching by this point. My Louisa Horsey sampler that I released had 60,000 stitches, and I really was up until 1 or 2 in the morning, many nights working on that. It turned out great. It sold great. And um, really everything of mine did super well. I have been printing and printing and printing and printing charts to try to keep up with demand, and that's just great. But yesterday I was like, I need a break, because I've been working every day since Christmas. And like most days it's tell from when I wake up until I go to bed again late. Like I said, sometimes really late. And so, but I have done a little bit of stitching. One of the things I didn't show you was it was um, my basket of buzz, which was a new design at market. I have this little basket series that you finish in these little drawers you get at Hobby Lobby. And so basket of buzz is a new one and that's available on my site as a download or as a chart or get that from your favorite shop. And that one was kind of cute. I have ideas for other in others in the series. It's a really nice, um, you know, I, I don't know how, it maybe took me two hours to stitch that or something like that. So it's just kind of a good quick like evening project. The finishing is really cheap, cheap and easy. And so there's that one. Oop. Cute. But yesterday I went to Jen's because we just both needed a break. She had a really busy time too, and she does have a full-time job. So she's running her Etsy shop and teaching at the university and she's a textbook author. So she always has revisions to do on those. So we both just are pretty whipped by this point. But I went to her house yesterday and I worked for a little bit on this Ida Nolt piece, which is a hands to work an old piece that you, you can't get the chart anymore. I used to sell these in my shop. This design is based on a, um, a hooked rug, an old hooked rug. And I really, really like it. And I'm stitching it in silks, mainly the ones that are called for, but I'm doing a little substituting as I need to. And so that one's really pretty. Um, I don't know why. I'll probably I'll frame it when it's done, but it was fun to pull it back out. I love stitching in silks. They're so soft. And then another one that I worked on just uh, not very long this week, but I was like, I need to sit down, is uh, Agnes Platt by Blackbird Designs. The border on this one is amazing and really fun to stitch. I am kind of diluting the colors, uh, you know, kind of doing my own colors of sampler threads just to make it look a little bit more washed out and worn. Uh, it is a reproduction sampler and it is available on my site. I'm sure it's a limited printing because it's a loose feathers from a couple of years ago. So I don't know how many are going to, you know, how many are left or how long you'll be able to get it. But uh, you get, I think, three patterns in that booklet. And this is one of them. And the border goes around three sides, but not the bottom. So, uh, I worked on that a little bit. And of course it's got the eyelet alphabet. And that's so pretty. I love eyelet alphabets. So that was something else I worked on this week, just a little bit. I did some of the blue checkerboard around the edge. Okay. What am I all into? I haven't even told you guys lately what I'm all into. I think I did, maybe I did, I don't know. But I'm all into Bayou, 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 uh, Satsuma rum and here's a picture of it here. My son Harrison went to Colorado this week to interview at grad school at Denver University and he got in for his to do his graduate work in psychology. He would like to eventually do count, uh, be a counselor 
And so he was very excited about getting in. I drove up to Jackson um, the other day to pick him up to, at the airport in Jackson. And on the way back, he said he wanted to get some sangria that someone had recommended to him as a, um, as like a celebratory, you know, like a celebratory bottle of sangria. And when I was in there, I saw this Bayou Satsuma rum. And Satsumas are little like citrus fruits that you can find down here that I had never heard of up north. They're basically a type of orange, a variety of orange. And it's really, really nice. The bottle is very cool. I'm kind of a sucker for packaging, so I'm a sucker for these cool bottles. Uh, I took it to Jen's yesterday and we splashed a little bit in 7-Up, which was the recommendation of the person at the liquor store. And it's really nice flavor. Um, you know, who doesn't like rum? It's very kind of sweet and syrupy and it's got that real nice citrus flavor. It's very smooth. And so if you can find that, I'd recommend it. I, it is made in, in near New Orleans. It's made in Louisiana, so it's kind of an area... Look, um, liquor, and I don't know if it's something you can get widely, but it is really good. Carmen, is it Nordback? I'm trying to remember what her last name is, from Cardan Designs, brought me a box of lemon cookies from Ham and Gordy's. Ham and Goodies? Ham and Goodies. <laughs> Here's a picture. You can actually order them, and they're among the best cookies I've ever eaten. I had never heard of them. They are lemon cookies. My mouth is... <laughs> I'm salivating. They're like sour sweet. They're really, really, really quite good cookies. And they do offer free shipping and they have other kinds of cookies and I'm sure they're also great. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, we ate them almost all. I made sure to save one for my husband and he also said that it was amazing. Very, very good cookies. I like OK Go. They are, I don't know, like a rock band popular. I mean, they're not super popular. I don't know if they get a ton of radio play. Um, whenever I'm feeling like frustrated or sad or just like, oh, I just can't get pepped up today. I go watch it. Um, I'll go, I'll just start like an okay go playlist on YouTube and it always jazzes me up. I'm going to put a link below to a playlist of theirs. If you're going to watch, um, if you're going to watch one, I would say Here It Goes is probably, that was the one that kind of put them on the map where they do this um, routine on treadmills and it's super fun to watch. Their music is very, they're so cool to me, to me, to me, they're cool. So I'm all into OK Go. I'm also into the This American Life podcast, which you can download for free on your uh, smartphone. And they have all, I think they have almost 700 episodes now, and you can listen to all of them. And I just think it's a really smart program. It's from uh, National Public Radio, WQEZ in Boston, I think, or something like that. And it's, they've been on for a long, long, long time, but they always just have great stories that are just compelling and very well done. And so if you like podcasts and you like a good story, uh, it's, it's really great. I listened to those on the way up and back from Nashville and it made my drive seem so much shorter than when I just drive in my car and sing. <laughs> so I'm super into birthdays and it's my birthday this week. On Tuesday, I will be 49, 49 and feeling fine. And I feel like this is it. Like my, the last of my youth is slipping away because in a year I'll be 50 and then it's like, you're legitimately an older person now. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do this year. I feel like I need to do something crazy. But I've always been super into birthdays. Everybody's always like, oh, what are you going to do on your birthday this year? Because I always plan the whole day out. I don't do any work on my birthday. So don't expect me to fill, fill your order on Tuesday because I'm not going to. But I'll, I'm sure I'll stitch. I may start a new project. I'll answer phone calls, open gifts. My husband is out of town, but my sons and I will probably go out to eat. It'll just be kind of a fun day of doing whatever the heck I want to do. And that's what a birthday should be. I feel that I feel I really like birthdays. That's what I'm all into this week and this year too. I have a brief stash flash. Things that I've picked up here and hither and thither. I got this on eBay. Like I got it in the mail just a few days ago. I don't remember when I bought it, but I found it on eBay. It's an old good housewife chart called 180 nine Quaker sampler 
and it's an old one. It's a reproduction, and somebody posted it for like $7.99, and I was like, oh, mine, because a lot of times you see this one, and it goes for a lot more. So I was pretty excited to get that. It's stitched in silks or... Oh, no, she's got it. Oh, okay, so she, ah, she's got it stitched for... Or it's it's charted for some DMC and some Soie d'Alger, or she has a DMC conversion to those colors, too. So I think that one's really cool. I got that... Uh... I got myself at market this cute little red Quaker box. I shaker box. I usually buy myself a, a gift or two at market just kind of for having fun. And I found this clever little booth where this guy makes these beautiful shaker boxes. I would have loved to have reordered from them. And I had placed a rather large post market order. And then I was told they don't sell to shops that aren't brick and mortar, which was a little bit disappointing. But I did buy one of these boxes. It's very, very sweet. I love that it's tall. And the wood that he uses is really, really thin. And so I got those there. He had stacks of boxes, you know, where you could get a whole stack of boxes that went from tiny, tiny to bigger. And they were really, really pretty. And he was very, so very nice. And so um, I will remember Nashville when I look at that. I got, um, I, I often buy myself a piece of jewelry from Kathy Barrick. She has the, what is it called? French Sentiments on Etsy. And she has buyers in France who buy old jewelry for her at like flea markets and things. And then they send them to her and then she breaks them apart and then reassembles them into really cool jewelry. And I had looked this year and I don't know if I missed out on a bunch of it. It didn't seem like there was as much maybe this year. And I went back and I was like, oh, I haven't bought a piece of jewelry yet. And she said, you know... That acorn necklace, I kind of was thinking of you when I made it. So I was like, well, now I have to buy it if you were thinking of me. And so I got this really cool necklace. It's got an acorn on the bottom. This is turquoise and this is smoky quartz. And I don't remember what these are. I've got it written down somewhere. So it's pretty long, which I like, and you can slip it over your head. But the acorn on the bottom is actually a thimble holder. So it would have been worn probably on a chain around somebody's waist. To hold their to hold their thimble so that it could be nearby and so it just it just screws apart and so now i think i'm going to see if i can find an old an old antique maybe thimble from the 1800s to put in there that might be really cool doesn't smell like anything did i get it in there right but anyway so that's pretty neat and i wore that on sunday then it was really cool okay and then i got I always have to run out for supplies at market because I've forgotten something or I, you know, have set up and I realize I need something extra. And Sue found this for me at Hobby Lobby. It's this really cool basket and it's got these little birdies on the back and you'll find it in their basket section. The regular price is only $20, but they were on sale. So I got it for 10 bucks and I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I really, really like it and it's, it's heavy. So Hobby Lobby. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a brief photo montage of some of the things at market here so you can see some of the things that I saw when I went to market and most of these things that you're seeing in these photographs are available on my site already. So I'm going to take you through a stroll down photo land. Here we are in Barb and Al Alma's booth. Their stuff is always so, so cute and I love the way they present it. I have no idea how they make it so that they can get all of this furniture to market. They had three books this market and they sold out immediately and I should have more probably tomorrow or Tuesday. They just knock it out of the park every single time. Their colors are so, so pretty. The Ooh La La book I feel like was the most popular one. This is Scarlet House. Um, I've got that one on the way. I think I missed out at market. Oh, and back at Barb and Alma's booth. Uh, they've got the Lasting Friendship booklet, and it's got that sampler there that's on the left that the colors are just so pretty. And you can put your friend's initials. They had this on the wall of their website, and they kept calling it wasabi tape. It's washi tape. But what a great idea, because those walls are so drab. Back at the Scarlet House booth again. This was the one that sold out in 45 minutes. It's got that beautiful border on the bottom. And I have those now, but I think I ordered more. Stacy Nash's Summer Pomegranate Needle Book. I kind of would like to make that. It's really, really cute. Oh, back in Bob, Barb and Alma's booth. I guess these are just in kind of random order. The pictures are also pretty. The displays at Market just are so inspiring. These are Lottie Da's little pin cushions, and I missed out on those. Those are on the way to me. And they're in the antique sewing drawer. 
This is the Sewing Bee by the Blue Flower Company, and I way, way missed out on this, but I should have more in a couple days. This is a 1717 Friesland Sampter by Queenstown. People went crazy over this one. I had to order a bunch more, and they are in stock right now. La Di Da's Reproduction Sampler, Elizabeth Jones. Pretty deer, pretty swans in the lawn. Blue Flower Company again. I love these little pin cushions. I thought her colors were just on point in these um, little pin cushions. They're so cute. Needlework Press had a great booth. I loved all of their reproduction samplers that they did. And for a lot of them, they had the reproductions right there. Queenstown Sampler designs a close-up of some lovely sheep and farm animals. The colors in this one are so bright and beautiful. There's what the whole sampler looks like. Isn't that border something else? It's so cheerful. I guess Ruby agrees. And here's a close up of the Sarah Unwin sampler by Chessie and Me. I love taking side shots of needlework because I feel like you really can see the texture and the light that comes off of them. There's that beautiful flower basket at the top and a beautiful big red brick house at the bottom. This one is a rainbow sampler by Needlework Press. Super unusual. I've never seen anything like it. It's Mexican. And this one is a lot like a Threads Through Time chart that you can't get anymore. The lawn with those people are just great. Needlework Press, I've got that one in stock. Hands Across the Sea samplers had really great ideas for using their greeting cards where they've got um, little designs on the back from the actual samplers. This is Primitive Hair for three, three Animals. She has quite a few in that series now and I guess I just don't know which one's my favorite. This is another one of her new designs, and I got that fob there that you see at the top of the design too. They're really pretty and they're handmade, so everyone's a little different. Hands Across the Sea again, a beautiful use of the design on the back. And these are Taylor's Beeswax Strawberries, and I have those on order. So, so pretty. This is another one in the Needlework Press booth. The colors are so pretty. Look at that pretty little butterfly in the middle uh, top of the wreath. And another antique sampler. This one was reproduced for Market 2 by Needlework uh, Press. This one was a not forgotten sampler um, company kit. And I might be out of those now, but I have more on order. They should be here in a couple months. As well as this kit. Um, it came with a little tin cup and everything to make it. Super cute. And the beeswax are too. The cats are very happy to have me back, by the way. Every time I leave and then I come back, they're like, oh, lady. And everybody has to like, at night, it's like just, you know, like when you were little, you would throw all your stuffed animals on the bed in one pile. That's what it's like with me, except cats and I'm the bed. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to my good friend, Sue. She was my Raise the Roof Designs partner and it continues to be just one of my very best friends. She's such a great help at market. She flies down. She takes time out. And she mans the booth while I'm running around at market and gives me time to get out and about. And she just does a great job. And I always can count on Sue. And isn't it great to have friends like that? I'm, I'm really fortunate to have such a good friend in Sue. When we got together, we shot a video of five questions. And it's on her channel. I'll put a link below. And it's just us asking each other five random questions and being a little bit goofy on Sunday morning before market. So thank you to Sue. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without you. I certainly, market would have been much, <laughs> much trickier to do it by myself. So you're very good to come and help me. Okay, guys, that's all. I got to put this video together and it's Sunday afternoon. We had the time change, so it's already one o'clock and I, I probably need a nap today. A lot of y'all have been asking, like, how have you been doing? And pretty well, I packed orders for 15 hours on Wednesday and then Thursday was real bad. It was real bad. <laughs> I still got some work done, but I slept off and on all day and was just sore. And so I'm kind of bouncing back and trying to take it a little bit easier. And I'll hopefully do that a little bit this afternoon. I've got a lot of orders to pack that have come in this afternoon, but Tuesday, don't forget, don't expect me to work. I'm not going to work. Thank you so much to everybody who has supported me and my designs and for making them the huge success that they are. I really appreciate it. Um, I quit my job a year ago. You might remember and it's been a great year it's like no regrets only good things mainly good things and so thank you to not only thank you to sue but thank you to all of you who are my internet friends and um i don't know what i do without you guys either 
Hope you have a great rest of the week. See you soon. Bye-bye.